Okay. Picture it. It's sleepy Sunday morning and you're rolling out of bed and you want something so good to eat. And I know I've blogged about this before, but now I have to share it with you in person. My Swedish pancake recipe is really the yummiest thing you can make on the weekends. I know you'll become a diehard like our family is. Literally every single Sunday we make Swedish pancakes. My mom used to make them when I was a kid and she didn't make them every Sunday, but man, when she made them, oh, they made me crazy. I love them so much. I could have these at midnight for dinner in bed with a little syrup dripped all over them, watching some show, some old black and white movie would be perfect for me too. Some bacon, you have to have bacon with these. But these are so easy to make that you'll be doing them in your sleep and I hope they become a tradition for your family as they are for ours. So simple, simple. First you have to grab your cup of tea or your coffee or whatever you've got. You take your big sip and then mm, you jump in. <clears throat> Flour. It's basic ingredients. It's flour, it's a little bit butter, it's um, milk. I use whole milk or 2%, whichever, it's fine. Um, a little bit of sugar, some vanilla, a pinch of salt, and three eggs. So, so simple. So I start with, <clears throat> I've got my flour and I'm at my milk. Um, it's about, um, it's like two and a half cups of milk and I will pour about half of it <clears throat> into my big bowl. And then I add to that my flour. Okay, and I will just mix that up just a little tiny bit. I will crack my eggs. And I always, when I, um, before I add eggs into anything that's got flour, I'll always whip them up just a little bit because I always figure the less amount of time I'm mixing my flour, the fluffier everything else is going to end up. Okay, so I've got my eggs. I put my eggs right in with it. Lovely. It's literally this fast. Well, I don't typically have all the ingredients set out for me like we do, like you and I do, but you know, it's, it's this easy. Then I will put, um, you know, just a pinch of salt in, about a tablespoon of sugar. You know, even if you're doing this off the top of your head the way I'm doing, I'm sure I'm always a little bit this way or a little bit that way on it. Um, mix that up. You can see the batter is, it's a very thin batter. Basically Swedish pancakes are like a crepe, right? They're very thin pancakes that you can kind of do anything you want to. You can fill them with all sorts of your own lusciousness, whatever you love. Um, lingonberries is what they're traditionally served with, uh, which you can buy at the grocery store um, in the kind of jelly jam preserve section. Um, but I'll show you how we do ours. So then, oh, I'm going to start my stove top and woo. And I put that on kind of a medium low. I've got a couple tablespoons of melted butter. Make sure when you add your melted butter in that it's room temperature. And it's always good, of course, if the rest of your ingredients are room temperature. Otherwise, what can happen is you'll pour in your butter and you'll find little tiny lumps of it floating all around in your pancakes. And you're going to be wondering yourself, what on earth are those little tiny lumps? It'll be your butter because it was too chilly because your milk was cold. So melt your butter, make sure. If your butter is too hot and you don't want to wait around for it, all you have to do is um, take a little scoop of your batter, pour it in. So you're basically, you know, tempering your butter. Now your butter has been brought to the same temperature and then dump it right back in and it'll all, it'll all be happy. Everyone will work out together. Okay, so I'm gonna get a napkin. Um, so you're with me so far, right? You need a little bit of vanilla in here. I like a couple of tablespoons and then I dump the rest of my milk in. And I'm basically doing all of those other things first just because it is such a very, <clears throat> the consistency is so um, thin that it's really nice to kind of get everything else mixed up first before um, I add that in. So you can see that it's very, very, you know, it's thin. It's very just, it's not at all like a normal pancake batter. 
And so you might feel like there's something wrong with this, but there really isn't. And in fact, if this happens to you, because it's happened to me before, if you feel like it's a little too lumpy, you can always strain it and um, any little lumps. You know, there's always a way to fix something that you mess up. And we all mess up in the kitchen all the time, for sure. And so then you find these little wonderful little tricks and things to fix things. So then I just have to grab a little measuring cup here. <clears throat> All right, my loves. So this pan right here, you may not have a crepe pan. If you do, way to go, soul sister or brother. Um, but I didn't have a crepe pan for the longest time. I just used a regular frying pan. It's totally fine to use one of those, don't worry. You know, I got one of these a few years ago because I became such a crazy person about making these that, you know, I sort of had one of those, oh, I'm a grown up, I'm gonna get myself a crepe pan. So I got one and then I got this little, you know, fancy tool which is all, you know, these are really inexpensive. It's basically, you know, my little flipper guy. And, um, but you don't need this either. You can use a spatula. This is pretty handy, I will say, because it allows me to sneak around the edge really nicely and then go and then flip it. Now, I will tell you, I'm just gonna get one of these going while we're talking. And this is how I always do the butter. Uh, you may entirely disagree with my methods, but you can run your kitchen your way and I'll run mine my way. Um, so I will take, I've got my pan, it's, you know, you can see you don't want the butter to get too, too hot. And I'll pour a good, what is this? That's about a third of a cup, okay? I just usually grab something out. And I'll just put it on the stove top. So it's not too much more than that. It's, it's pretty thin. I'll always make sure that the heat, you know, it'll usually start at a little bit higher. And this will take, um, you know, a little while to get itself going. I'm hoping you can see it. There are a few little lumps in there, but that's okay. That's never a big deal. If you run into that kind of stuff, it's not a big deal. I always find, too, <clears throat> that my first pancake, oddly, I think I'm so excited about the pancakes, um, you know, getting ready for me to eat them. Um, and I always get the first one, even though my kids think they're getting the first one, that I get, I think I get anxious and I want to flip it too soon. And that might happen to you too and you might think you're messing up, but surely you're not. You're probably trying to flip it a little bit too early and I can even show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but so you can see now it's cooking very nicely and it's nice and firm and it has to be um, nicely browned underneath before you actually flip your first one. Otherwise, the whole thing will become quite a mess. So you can see how easily this thing moves around because I always keep the pan really nicely buttered. Again, this is, um, you know, don't be afraid of butter in these things. Just, you know, you don't have to eat 12 of them. <laughs> Just have four of them. <laughs> and then you can have them exactly the way you want to have them, which that's how I prefer to eat anyway. So I'm going to try to show you if I can sneak under this little fella. I might actually ruin it while I'm showing you. But see, it's a little too white still. I don't even know if you saw that, but it's a little too white still, so it's not ready to flip. The other way I can tell it's not ready to flip is it sort of separates a little too much if I'm messing around with it. These Swedish pancakes have um, a little bit more of a rubbery texture than a typical pancake. A typical pancake is more cakey. You know, they rise up and they are a little bit thicker when you cut into them. You can see all the little pores or whatever you call them a lot more easily. They're like little cakes. These are just a little bit, you know, I don't know, easier, thinner, you know, and you can eat so many more of these. <laughs> so anyways, this is looking about right and I will get my lovely underneath and flip it over. So this one I told, I kind of ripped it while I was sh trying to show you the bottom. And so, you know, don't panic. If you do rip a few of these, it's okay because, um, you know, you're just going to eat them anyway, so don't get your undies in a bundle over that one. Just enjoy them. But I like how they get kind of nicely browned. And if you can see, if I don't slide it onto the counter, nicely browned. And you'll see it's kind of puffing up and everything. The problem with these is the minute you put it onto your plate, you're going to want to start eating them. So what I do is I start putting them onto my plate. And I'll kind of make a nice stack of them. And I will oftentimes just take um, a towel and I will lay it over the top. And then when we're ready to eat them, um, <clears throat> I'll either pop them into the microwave just really quickly to warm the whole stack back up again. Now, if that's not the case, which you know that sometimes isn't the case in our house. So this one looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna, now that I've sort of um, mangled it in the first place, I'm gonna 
have a harder time flipping it onto the plate, and there it goes all over the place. But So the first one, I'm telling you every time I do the first one it does that, but I just have to show you the color of it is really pretty. So then get your second one going, and after your first one they always turn out really, really um, nicely. So just get your batter in the pan, always butter your pan again, throw it on. So I'm just going to show you though the consistency of these is really so nice and like I said they are a little bit more rubbery. So if you have a few that fall apart like this, just view those as bonus pancakes for you. <laughs> That's how I try to look at them. Oh, I'm, oh, the first one is ripped is always my, is what I'm always saying to John and then of course I'm always just taking the butter and you know I'm always nibbling on the first one. And of course the boys know that I'm always making these and mm, much trouble because what I hear them yelling to me is, Mom, can I have the first pancake? And of course I always promise each of them, yes, you can have the first pancake. Well, I'm in here with the news on, having my tea and eating the first pancake. <laughs> mm. So anyway, I'm gonna show you this one. I'm hoping for your sake and for mine that it's a prettier version of a Swedish pancake so you can really see what I'm talking about. But you may remember, even when I wrote about these last time, I always ruined the first one. So, who cares? It doesn't really matter. So this one's not ready to cook yet either. You know, there are so many things, um, once you actually get used to making these, and when I say that, you really will get used to making these, that you'll love doing with them. I know I had mentioned lingonberries, which are really marvelous with them, but um, John likes to put strawberries in the middle of his and then he puts a little whipped cream. Mmm, that's really good. And um, I really prefer mine with, see how pretty that one is? Why does the second one always work? I have no idea, but it's prettier. So um, I always prefer mine just with, um, I fold mine, I quarter it. Oddly, you can laugh. I'm sure you're laughing at me. I quarter it, and I put four of them on my plate. <laughs> and then I make sure they're perfectly warm, and then I drizzle butter over the top. And then I go sit down because, you know, at that point, either the kids have, they usually are sitting right along here when I'm cooking them, and they're just, they want to eat them as I make them, you know. Okay, so this one is so perfectly perfect, and I'm going to show you just for time's sake, because I know you're busy and you have things to get on with. So what I'll do is I'll take this one and I'll quarter it like this, right? Look at that beautiful, lovely specimen. And then what I will do is, so always melt some butter ahead of time because you know that's so good. Drizzle a little bit of butter over the top. I know how, I hope you can, I hope you can smell this through the camera because you know it's just so crazy. And then I love real maple syrup and I will always drizzle just a tiny bit of it on the top. Naturally, little powdered sugar, come on, hello, come out. <laughs> little powdered sugar, a big bowl of fruit, put a little powdered sugar on that too. And then look at this just absolutely perfect breakfast. I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna let you have a little bite, okay. <laughs> you can see how really luscious it is, but they're so perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm. You have to have, I'm not kidding, you have to have at least three or four. Oh, am. Hang on, I'll be right back. I did, I did make some bacon, and I forgot to bring it over, but you have to have bacon with these because the perfect thing about having bacon with these is you have to put that little extra bit of syrup on your plate and then dip your bacon in it and um, have a bite of your pancake with the bacon, and you're just literally, you're gonna fall on the floor. You're gonna have these at midnight too, I swear. Mm -hmm.